different. So, you know, if you're going to market to the wealthy, you really have to, maybe it isn't your entire business, but you definitely need to set up a marketing campaign that sends the message to them that you are focusing specifically, specifically on them because they are a unique group with, uh, you know, their own unique, you know, foibles and challenges and concerns and expectations. Uh, and, you know, the more you understand that, then the more you can, uh, can create really compelling, uh, marketing messages that uh, will will get their attention and will get uh, get them to uh, to do business with you and it doesn't really matter that much if you're a financial advisor or you're you know doing jet leasing or you run an art gallery or you're a concierge medical practice uh the the affluent will respond to you know a kind of a commonality of uh of, of messages. But let, let's fly the plane a little bit higher today and let's talk about the three groups of people that the affluent will, will do business with. Because what, what our goal is, is to become a member of one or more of those three groups. And what I've discovered is that the affluent will do business with people they know, people that are referred to them by people they know, or people that they perceive as to be as being recognized experts in their field. So, uh, people they know. Well, you know, this is you know you, you may have grown up in an affluent environment, went to prep school, went to the right colleges, live in the right neighborhoods, uh, and you know that is of course you know you you've got a big big advantage but you know most most people don't have that so the question becomes you know how do you become known and one of the things of course is and I'm not telling you anything you probably don't know already but it's you know going to the places where they are because getting known is a little bit you don't have to get into known in the sense of that you're, you know, your lifelong buddies and you're, you know, hanging out and sharing secrets. What you, when I say getting known, uh, what I mean is that they've seen you, you're, you're around, you know, you may be on the periphery, but you're somebody that, yeah, they recognize. So that's the reason why consistently, and I can't emphasize this word enough, consistently, going to those art gallery openings and the opera and the symphony and the exotic car club, you know, all those things that people, you know, people who uh, are affluent congregate at, going to those on a consistent basis, that's what gets you known because, you know, they do, they, they, they do start to recognize you. They start to think, okay, you're now a member of, uh, of that particular tribe. Now, Look, this is this is a long game. You don't show up one time and all of a sudden expect to develop a great number of connections that are going to, you know, do business with you. You know, you you've really got to devote a a certain period of time uh, to this. Uh, I lived in Atlanta for 30 years. There was what was called the season and it was all the charity events, you know, the Heart Association, the Cancer Association, the, you know, fill in the blank disease association and they all have gala balls. And, you know, we had, I had a number of clients and they actually tended to be mostly in financial services, although I don't think that's necessarily uh, key, but you know, they, they went to these things and, and they told me pretty consistently that, you know, they didn't get squat the first two or three times they went, but after about the fourth or fifth time, you know, people started to recognize them. People were a little bit more open uh, to uh, to engaging them in, in conversation. And certainly by the time the second season rolled around, now they would become actually a part of the tribe. They became people that, you know, they, they were known. So this, this can be done. It doesn't cost you any money aside from, from the ticket. Uh, it does require a... You know, the ability to actually show up. But even more importantly, it requires the ability not to get discouraged. And that's and that's the real key for so much in marketing. Because, you know, we'll we'll try something, we'll get all excited about something, and if it doesn't immediately produce results, then we tend to give up. And 
that's that's the reason why most of this stuff doesn't work. That's the reason why most people aren't aren't successful. So, you know, if, if you do it, you, you know, make a commitment that you're going to stick with it for a defined period of time. You know, I'm not saying it's something you got to do forever, but, you know, realistically, you know, make a commitment, do it for a season, do it for, you know, uh, six months. Uh, because it is going to take time for the wealthy and the affluent to get comfortable with you. I mean, good Lord. I mean, common sense would dictate this. And, and you know this. You know, they get pitched all the time. And because they got money, uh, they're very, very skeptical. And they've got barriers put up, both in terms of gatekeepers, but also in terms of just their own attitude to, you know, keep people who just want to sell them stuff away. So you got to become this familiar face, but it, you know, it isn't hard, you know, as long as you are, uh, as long as you make the commitment, as long as you show up to, to the right places, as long as you don't sit in the corner and not talk to anybody, you know, there, there's nothing magical about this. And simply as Woody Allen says, you know, 80% of success in life is simply showing up. You know, that's really, really true. So, uh, that makes a lot of sense if, of course, your market is, you know, local to you and, you know, you're living in Chicago, Miami, New York, Los Angeles, pick a big city, you know, that's going to, that's going to, you know, make, make a lot of sense. But, and here's a but, it's much more difficult to pull off if your clients are uh, outside of your, of your local area. So case in point, I live here in Pinehurst, North Carolina. Don't know if Pinehurst means anything to you. We, it's a it's a golf resort. Uh, it's we host the U.S. Open. It's you know it's big time golf. We're the nation's largest country club with soon to be ten courses. This is this is big time country club stuff, but it's a small town, fifteen thousand people. Now there's wealthy people here, no doubt. But when you're dealing with a base of fifteen thousand people. Yeah, there's not a huge number. So for some people who want affluent clients, just doing a local, you know, getting connected with the wealthy isn't going to be enough. And that brings me to number three on the list, which is the rich do business with those that they perceive as recognized experts. I'll talk about, you know, the the referrals from those they know at, at another time, because I don't want this thing to, you know, go on forever. And quite frankly, I'm going to go play golf. But anyway, um, recognized expert. That is so important. Um, you know, becoming the recognized expert, you know, in, in your field. So how do we go about doing it? And the answer is content. Now there's all sorts of different kinds of content. There's content like, you know, like this, you know, where you're uh, connecting with people on, on social media. And, you know, I, I was late to the ball game in terms of social media. I was somebody that didn't think it was going to be necessary you know, obviously I'm wrong. Obviously it's something that has to be a part of your, uh, uh, of, of your marketing outreach, but being on social just for the sake of being on social isn't what I'm talking about. What I'm really talking about is becoming that recognized expert, which is that you need to provide value. You need to have people, you know, watch your videos, read your articles, read your blog, read your book, uh, and say, you know, hey, that was helpful. That is really somebody that knows, knows their stuff. Because, you know, look, you can be you know, very, very knowledgeable, but if the proverbial light is held under the proverbial bushel, you know, it's not going to do you much good. So you've got to get, you've got to get the word out. You've got to become that recognized expert in your field. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways that you, you can do this. Now, 
I refer to this as being an inch wide and a mile deep. You know, within the world of marketing to the affluent, I'm one of the go-to people. I'm one of the you know, handful of people that really, really knows their stuff and is recognized as being an expert in this. Now, you get me outside of affluent marketing, nobody knows who I am, but that's, you know, that, that's totally cool because my market is very, very defined. Now, the more that your market is defined, the easier it is going to be for you to become that recognized expert. Now, let's use an example. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's say you're a financial advisor. Well, gee, congratulations. You're one of a gazillion real number of financial advisors. So how do you become that expert? Well, you know, one per, one way would be obviously to, you know, write a best-selling book. Okay, well, exactly how do we go about doing that? Well, can you do it? Sure you can. I've done it twice. Uh, but, you know, it ain't easy and it's a lot of work and it's really tough to be a nationally recognized expert. But if you said, okay, I'm a financial expert and I focus on women, that's a lot easier. I'm a financial advisor and I focus on boomers. Again, a little bit easier. I'm a financial advisor and I focus on the Hispanic market. Again, a little bit easier. So the more that you have a niche or niches, then the more you can have your content speak directly to that niche and the more you can be uh, one of the recognized experts. So, you know, of course, the affluent market breaks down into all sorts of different subsets. You know, there's people that were born wealthy. There are people that uh, have had a liquidity event and all of a sudden have, you know, got a lot of money. Uh, there are uh, boomers. There are, you know, millennials. There are females. There are all sorts of ethnic groups. And the more that you focus on them, then you can target a campaign focused on content that will get you that nationally recognized expert or that, that recognized expert status that, that you want. So now how do you go about doing that? Well, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that, you know, in, in more detail. Matter of fact, if you, you know, have a curiosity about that right now, head over to gentlerainmarketing.com and go to the blogs. And there's a number of videos and articles about that particular topic. But I will, before I end uh, this particular topic, I will tell you the one thing that has worked for me, and I think it would work well for you if you really want to become that national expert or that well-known expert. I don't know, keep, why I say, keep saying national expert because, you know, that's probably not going to happen. But you can become very well-known to your particular niche if you write a book. I don't know what it is about books. It's crazy because, you know, who's reading books nowadays? I mean, I guess, I guess a lot of people are, but somehow being a published author of a book, not a PDF, you know, but a actual bona fide book gives you an awful lot of credibility and status and recognized expert points for lack of a better term. Uh, now, the great thing about it is writing a book could not be easier than it is today. I mean, back when I started, I was a syndicated newspaper columnist, did some work for the Wall Street Journal, put together a whole bunch of my articles, and I sent them to McGraw-Hill, and I said, hey, you know, would this make an interesting book? And they wrote back and said, no, not particularly, but we like your writing style, and we're looking for an author to assign to this particular book title. Uh, would you be interested? Yeah, that doesn't happen today. I mean, that's, you know, there's so many gatekeepers. You got to be repped by an agent. It's, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's tough. But today it, you have the option of getting a bona fide book published uh, through Amazon's KDP program. And I mean, it's totally awesome. I mean, most of the books today are sold on Amazon. Um, most of them are sold online. Amazon will produce your book both in terms of paperback as well as as Kindle. But once you are a re once you are a published author, and then if you do the stuff to get your book well known and ideally number one in a specific category, I tell you the 
the, the level of recognized expert points you get far exceeds anything else. I don't quite know why that is, but it is. So uh, that is one thing I'd be thinking about doing the easiest way to do it. If you don't want to go to, uh, you know, artificial intelligence and have them write it for you, which, you know, that day is probably coming pretty soon. But the easiest way to do it is to write yourself a blog or record a blog on a regular basis, get that transcribed, hire an editor on uh, Upwork and have them produce a manuscript for you and you can then tweak it and you know, you've got yourself a book pretty, pretty quickly. But I would be seriously thinking about writing a book. Anyway, um, I got to I got to head on out. I got to practice my swing. I want to make some money today playing chip golf. Um, let me leave you with one thing. Speaking of books, my ninth book, The Affluent Marketing Blueprint, confidently selling to billionaires and millionaires is about to come out in I think it's three weeks. So when I release a book, what I do is I offer a certain number of copies for free. All you got to do is, you know, help me out with a you know, postage and handling. And this is a real book. This is, you know, not just some, you know, lame ass PDF. It's an actual book. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I send it out to, uh, to a small group of people for, uh, for free. Now, why do I do that? Well, uh, primarily uh, the reason is that I'm hoping, and there's no obligation, but I'm hoping that if you're one of the people who gets the free book, you'll, of course, not only read it, which you should, but you'll be kind enough to uh, put a review on, uh, on Amazon. And that's, of course, what drives, drives book sales. So I do this. You know, it obviously costs me money, so I can't, as they say in the info commercials, I can't be doing this all day. But uh, there is a uh, button, I think, somewhere on this page that uh, you can click to get uh, uh, get on the early bird list. Uh, if not, the URL is really pretty simple. It's affluentmarketingfreebook.com. Uh, so that's um, uh, that. If you if you go to that page, you can uh, you can sign up, get on the early bird list, and then when the book comes out, I'll give you a heads up, and um, you can uh, uh, you can let me know if you still want it. In which case, then I'll you know, ship it over to you, and uh, uh, you'll. Uh, you know, hopefully, I, I think you're going to really enjoy it. I'm really, really proud of it. Uh, the first readers have said that they found it really, really helpful. So uh, hopefully you will too. So take advantage of that if you think it would be uh, be helpful. And if nothing else, it's a great model for how you might want to produce your own book. So that's all, that's all good stuff. So with that, I am going to, uh, I'm going to uh, sign off. Thank you so much. Those of you who are watching this live uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Those of you who are watching this recorded. And uh, if you want a copy of, uh, if you want to get on the early bird list for the book, go ahead and click the link. And uh, that would be, uh, that would be much, uh, much appreciated. So with that, uh, wish me luck winning, um, you know, quarters. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.